Hi guys, today we are going to talk about how to write an abstract. So if you're studying in college, doing either your undergrad or postgrad, chances are you will have to write an abstract at least at some point during your studies. So before we get into that, let me introduce myself. I am Neha Agrawal, I have a Masters in Engineering from NTU Singapore and I have three paper publications in internationally reputed journals. I have also coached over 200 students from NTU Singapore, IITs and NITs in India as to how to write a research paper. So if you also want to learn research paper writing in detail, you can register for a free demo to my research paper writing workshop. The link is given in the description. And now, let's begin. In today's video, we're going to talk about what is an abstract and what does it even mean? After that, we're going to talk about the features of an abstract. So how is an abstract different from the other sections of your report or your research paper? Next, we're going to talk about how are you supposed to write an abstract? So what are the components that you're supposed to include in your abstract section? Towards the end, I will also share with you a homework question that will help in improving your research writing skills even further. So, do stay with me till the very end. And now, let's get going. Whenever you have to write a research paper or a research proposal or a project report, say for example your final year project report or your master's thesis, or even if you are going for a conference, you have to submit an abstract. So what exactly is an abstract and what does it even mean? An abstract is a summary of your entire article. Or if I say it in fancy language, an abstract is a condensed form or an abridged version of your report. It basically means that if you are writing a long report, an abstract is going to explain in brief what that report contains. An abstract is also one of the most important sections of a research paper. And why is that? Because once your research paper is published and it is available for other researchers to read, they are first going to look at your abstract and based on that, they will decide whether they want to read the rest of your paper or not. So you also need to hold the interest of the reader in an abstract. Now coming to the next topic which is what are the features of an abstract. So the first feature is an abstract reflects all the major sections of your report. So as I said earlier an abstract is a summary of your entire report. So if your report consists of four sections like the introduction, the materials and methods, the results and discussion and conclusion, an abstract will also reflect all these major sections. The second feature is that an abstract is concise, which means it is to the point. It doesn't consist of any unnecessary information because the word limit for an abstract itself is between 150 to 250 words. So you need to include all the key information from all the sections, but in limited number of words only. The third feature is that an abstract is self-contained. And what does that mean? It means that even though an abstract consists of limited number of words only, but you can understand the complete meaning without requiring any supporting information or extra information. So an abstract is complete in itself. And finally, even though an abstract appears right at the top of your research paper or your project report, it should be the last section that you write. And why is that? Because once you've written all the other sections of your report, you will know what are the key points that need to be included in an abstract. And then writing it will become very easy. So now let's discuss what are the key components of an abstract. So if you're writing a research paper or a project report, ideally your abstract would consist of these five components. The first component of your abstract is the introduction, which includes the motivation or the background for your research. So you need to answer these questions here. Why have you taken up this project? What is the motivation behind it? Or why is your research significant? And how is it going to create an impact? When you answer these questions, you will have the motivation or the background for your research. So you need to explain that in one to two lines at max.
The next component is the problem statement or objective. So here you need to first talk about the research gap, which is what is the problem that the existing researchers have not been able to solve so far. So that is the problem statement that you're going to write. After that, you can also share the objective, which is what are you going to do in this project or in this research paper to overcome that research gap that constitutes as your objective. So make sure that you include the research gap and the objective of your research paper in one to two lines only. The next component is the approach or the procedure. And I think the meaning is very clear here. You need to talk about the methodology that you followed in order to overcome that research gap and to achieve your objective. So the key thing to remember here is that you need to only talk about the overview of the process and not explain the methods in detail. So please don't mention things like 5 grams of sulfur was taken or 5 ampere of current was passed through the circuit. Only give an overview of the process which is the methodology and that too in one to two sentences only otherwise you will exceed your word limit. The fourth component is the results and discussion and here you need to include the key results and discussion that helped you in achieving that objective. All the other supporting results and supporting discussion can be a part of your main paper and you need not include it in your abstract. Now if you want to understand in detail what does results mean, what does discussion mean and how are you supposed to write them, you can watch my previous video on how to write a research paper. And finally, the last component of your abstract is the conclusion. And here you need to share the broader applications or broader implications of your study. How has your research study made an impact and how has it added value to the research field or the research community? But one thing that you need to be cautious here is that don't exaggerate too much. Because if you do that, it will reduce the credibility of your research and credibility of your writing. So stick to the point and share genuine facts as to how your research has made an impact. So guys, as you can see, writing an abstract is not complicated at all. If you know what are some of the key points that you need to include in your abstract, writing it will become very easy. Now, if you're writing a research proposal, it is slightly different from a research paper or a normal project report. And why is that? Because if you're giving a research proposal, you don't have the results and discussion till now. So in order to write an abstract for your research proposal, just leave that component out. So you should include the introduction, which is the background or motivation of your study. Then you should talk about the problem statement or objective. Then you should talk about the proposed method that you're going to follow. And finally, what is the expected outcome or impact that your research is going to create? And now for the homework question. So I told you that an abstract is a summary of your entire article. So what is a conclusion? Is it also a summary? Do you write the same information in a conclusion as you do in an abstract? If not, how is a conclusion different? Research, find out and tell me in the comments below. I'll be waiting for your answers. So guys, thank you for watching this video and I hope you will now be able to write your abstract very easily. If you want to learn research writing in detail, you can register for a free demo to my research writing workshop and I will see you in my live sessions.